Okay, we're going to talk about the energy equation now. So let's look at this. All right, energy equation. So we're going to go back to our discussion of heat. So we're going to be using our equation, delta Q equals dH minus V dP. Remember that's volume. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to consider adiabatic flow because remember that's what we were talking about before. So let's consider our adiabatic flow. And if we have adiabatic flow, what does Q do? Nothing, right? We don't add or remove any heat. So if that's the case, if we've got adiabatic flow, that delta Q is zero. Okay, so we've got zero here, and that means we can set this to zero, which will give us dH minus V dP equals zero. All right, now, earlier we derived the momentum equation. So if we go back to that and write out that equation, we know that dP equals negative rho V dV, where this V is velocity. All right, so there we have it. So these Vs are velocity, and this again was from the momentum equation. So this gave us an equation for a change in pressure. Now if we look, I've got dP right here, I've got dP right here. So we could take this, plug it in here, right? Let's do that. All right, so we're going to have dH plus that volume times rho v dv equals zero. Now remember this volume here, I can write that as one over density, okay? So if we do that, that means this and this will cancel each other, right? And then that's going to give me dh plus v dv equals zero. Now if you look, I've got two d derivative terms, right? I got dH and then I've got dV. Okay, now that gives you change, right? So remember what we're doing, we're trying to go between two points on a streamline. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate between two points on a streamline. And if we do that, we're going to have the integral from H1 to H2, right there, and then that's going to be dH. That, let's not put equals, this should be a plus, plus the integral from V1 to V2 of V dV equals zero. Okay, now if you go through and integrate this, obviously the integral of dH is going to be H. We plug in these limits, we get H2 minus H1. Then over here, we're doing the integral of V times dV. So that one, you're going to have V squared over 2. And then we need to plug in these limits. So we're going to have V2 squared over 2 minus V1 squared over 2. Then that equals 0. Now, let's take this. Let's put the point 0.2 terms on one side, the point 0.1 terms on the other. Okay. So you're going to have H2 plus V2 squared over 2 equals H1 plus V1 squared over 2. And basically what that gives you is that tells you that h plus v squared over 2 for any point is going to be equal to a constant. Okay, so there's that. So here's another whoops equation right there. And remember what this h is. h is enthalpy, okay, in case you forgot. Now, another way you could do this, if you don't like that derivation, if you go back to thermodynamics, everybody's favorite. So if you go back to that, you had one of your energy balance equations, right? So you had your Q dot over M dot minus W dot over M dot plus H1 minus H2 plus v1 squared minus v2 squared over 2 plus your potential term, so g times z1 minus z2. All right, so you had this equation in thermodynamics. 
So if you apply the adiabatic condition here, we're going to get rid of this. We'll get rid of this because we're not going to have any power. And we're going to get rid of that. So notice you have the same terms. Okay. So that's just another way of getting it. Okay. If you're more familiar with that equation there. Now, we've got this general equation. I want to get rid of enthalpy here. I want to replace that with something else. I want to have temperature in my equation. So if you all remember, when we talked about enthalpy, we can relate enthalpy with temperature through that specific heat value. So let's write out the energy equation for frictionless, because remember we're saying no friction, adiabatic flow. And remember the H is Cp times T, where this is our specific heat at constant pressure, T is temperature. All right. So if you take this and we plug it in for the H's, you end up getting Cp T1 plus 1 half V1 squared. That's going to equal Cp T2 plus 1 half V2 squared. Okay, so now you've got that. And again, notice these are the same equation. They're just between two different points, right? So you could write out that Cp times T plus 1 half V squared at any point is going to equal a constant. So that'll re let you relate points to each other, okay? So you might want to box that one too. All right, so those are going to be our energy equations. So this is going to allow us to relate temperature to velocity. Okay, because we didn't have that up until now. So now we've got velocity with temperature in here. And let's do an example. So I'm going to stop this video, pause it. I'm going to write out the problem description, and then we'll go over the example. All right, so here is our problem statement. So again, you want to pause the video, write down the problem statement so you have it in your notes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to consider an airfoil in a flow of air where far ahead of the airfoil we've got, which is called the free stream, the pressure is going to be 2116, so 2116 pounds per square foot. Velocity is 500 miles per hour, and density is going to be 0 0.002377 slugs per cubic feet. All right, so we're in English units. Nobody likes it, right? Now, at a given point A on the airfoil, the pressure is given as 1,497 pounds per square foot. Now, what is the velocity at point A? And we're, gonna, we're told to assume isentropic flow, and it gives us our CP value for air. Okay, so now we have that. Now, first of all, if you weren't told to assume isentropic flow, you could look at this velocity and kind of guess that that's what you're supposed to do, because this is 500 miles per hour. Remember, compressible flow, we usually say, is for speeds greater than 225 miles per hour. That exceeds that by a lot, right? So, so we know we're going to have compressible flow here. So let's write that out. So that's going to be compressible flow. Okay. So we've got that. Now... I want to have velocity, okay? Now, we already looked at the equations just a second ago that have velocity in them. All right, so we had this equation. So V here is velocity, but I need these temperatures, right, in order to be able to solve for the velocity. So let's see what we need to do about that. So I need a relationship between temperature and something else. So let's look at our problem statement and see what we've got. I've got a pressure right here, right, at the free stream condition. So there's the pressure, and then notice I've got another pressure here. So I've got two pressures. So I want the equation that relates pressure to temperature. Now, if y'all remember, we've got one of those. So let's say PA over the pressure for the free stream point, which we'll just label that with infinity, is going to be equal to TA over T infinity. And that's to the power of gamma over gamma minus one. Now, 
We need to just plug everything in and get our temperature. So the pressure at A was 1497. All right, your units are all going to cancel, so you can write them out or leave them, leave them out however you want to do it. And then the free stream pressure was 2116. All right, so again, those cancel. And then that's going to equal your temperature at A, which I don't know that yet, right? So I don't have that. And then the free stream temperature, I don't have that either. So let's leave that as T infinity. Now this is going to be 1.4 over 1.4 minus 1 because we have air. So anytime we have air, gamma is going to be 1.4. So now I've got that. Now we can go ahead and simplify this. And if you do that, you'll get that your ratio of temperatures is going to be 0 0.9059. Okay, so now we've got this equation to use. All right, so what I'm going to do, since at this free stream uh, condition here, I've got pressure, I've got density. So I've got those two things. Now we have an equation that relates pressure, density, and temperature, remember. So pressure is rho RT, right? So I've got pressure, I've got density, I can find temperature. All right, so T infinity is going to be the P infinity over R times rho. Okay. Now we just plug in our values. So we got 2116 and then R for the English units, remember it's 17, 16, and then our density, 0 0.002377, okay. And I know I'm leaving all the units out. I'm getting bad about doing that. Anyways, let's do the calculation. So if you do the math here, you're gonna get 518.76, that'll be degrees Rankin. All right, now we've got this temperature and I've got this ex expression right here. So I could take this 518 number, plug it in here. TA will be my only unknown. Okay, so now I'm going to have 0 0.9059 times 518.76. And that gives me 469.948 degrees Rankin. Okay, so now I have that. All right, so now I've got my two temperatures. Remember what we want. We want velocity at point A. Now I can go to that energy equation and I'll have everything I need. So let's go to that equation next. So CP times T infinity plus one half V infinity squared is going to equal CP TA plus one half VA squared. And then let's plug in our values. Remember we were given this CP value right here. Okay, so we're going to have 6006 T infinity 518.76 and then we're going to have plus one half times that V infinity. All right, and what is V infinity going to be? Well, I was told velocity is 500 miles per hour at that free stream condition, right? So can I just stick miles per hour in here? No, we can't do that, right? So we can't do that. I need to have that in feet. So we got to convert this to feet per second. So 500 miles per hour is going to be 733.3 feet per second. And we're going to use this value. And then square it. All right, so that takes care of our left-hand side. Then we do the same thing on the right-hand side. CP is not changed, so 6,006. Now our temperature, we need a temperature at point A, which was 469. So we get 469.948. Then we're going to have plus 1 half VA squared. Now if you look, we have one equation, one unknown. Perfect. That means we can find VA. So now we're going to find this velocity or speed at point A. 
And if you solve that, you'll get 1,060.22 feet per second. All right, so now you've got your velocity at point A on that airfoil. Okay. So that's how you go about using that energy equation. So unless you're given these temperatures, you're going to have to use these other equations to find your temperature. Again, make sure temperatures are in absolute uh, temperature scale. So Rankin or Kelvin, no Celsius or Fahrenheit. Okay. All right, so that's the end of that example. I'll see you on the next one.